Hello, this is Anuja Matthew. It's January 26, 2021. Today I'd like to talk about rogue antibodies and how they could be driving severe COVID infections. So why do some people get so much sicker than others? And why does the lung damage sometimes continue to worsen in some individuals well after the body seems to have cleared the virus infections? And is there a reason behind the extended multi-organ illness that lasts for months in people who have long-term effects with COVID? So there's some recent publications and uh, manuscripts submitted for publications that suggest that the immune system might be mistakenly turning against the body, that rogue antibodies are driving severe COVID infections. Autoantibodies are natural antibodies that react with self-antigens. There are many examples of individuals with autoimmune disorders like SLE or lupus, type 1 diabetes. And here, individuals produce autoantibodies that target and react with people's own cells, tissues, and or organs. Many viral infections cause autoimmunity. There are mechanisms that have been suggested for why, how some viruses can cause autoimmunity. The most common is molecular mimicry. Here, viruses carry antigens that are structurally similar to self-antigens. And because they're so similar, you have cross-reactive responses after viral infections against self and non-self or viral antigens, leading to the development or activation of autoreactive T cells. Another possibility is bystander activation, where there's nonspecific inflammation in response to the viral infection. And this nonspecific reaction or inflammation then releases uh, self-antigens from damaged tissue. And these damaged tissues that release self-antigens then get presented on antigen-presenting cells and activate autoreactive T cells. So by, in a nonspecific way, the cytokines that are released from viral infections cause um, the development of autoimmunity or, or autoreactive T cells. Another option, which is an extension of bystander activation, is epitope spreading. This typically occurs with persistent viral infections or chronic viral infections. This leads to a lot of tissue damage because the virus is present for a long period of time and the release of new self-antigens. These new self-antigens depicted in blue are presented on antigen-presenting cells and activate autoreactive T cells. And they're spreading from the generation of this autoreactive T cell to other autoreactive T cells, causing epitope spreading. Provided in this table are many examples of viral infections that have been linked to autoimmune diseases. For example, multiple sclerosis has been associated with measles virus, cytomegalovirus, varicella zoster, and some of the mechanisms are via molecular mimicry. In contrast, Epstein-Barr virus and cytomegalovirus have also been seen in rheumatoid arthritis, and that's, the mechanism is thought to be via epitope spreading. Bystander activation has been seen in uh, lupus prone mice and also a disease known as Sjogren's syndrome that's uh, been associated with hepatitis C virus. In September of 2020, Dr. Casanova's group published a manuscript which looked at autoantibodies against a specific cytokine known as a set of cytokines known as type 1 interferons. And they found that in patients with life-threatening COVID infections, a number of patients had elevated levels of these autoantibodies against type 1 interferons. So what do type 1 interferons do? Type 1 interferons are secreted in response to viral infections. They signal through specific receptors, activate genes and proteins, and prevent or block viral infections. So in people who have severe COVID, about 10% of these people already had existing antibodies to type 1 interferons, which were exacerbated during their SARS-CoV-2 infection. In this situation, these autoantibodies blocked type 1 interferons and therefore prevented signaling. And because they prevented signaling, the genes were not stimulated in response to the signaling, and therefore they were ab not able to control infection as significantly as people who had mild infection, who had um, good signaling through uh, their interferon receptors. 
The findings from this study indicated that 10% of people with life-threatening COVID pneumonia had neutralizing autoantibodies against type 1 interferons. These patients uh, were born with inborn errors of type 1 interferons, so they had a genetic predisposition for uh, developing these, auto these autoantibodies. However, these autoantibodies were clinically silent because these patients were relatively healthy until they were infected with SARS-CoV-2. So there's probably a lot of effort trying to figure out why SARS-CoV-2 infection triggered the upregulation of these autoantibodies against type 1 interferons. SARS-CoV-2 patients then can be screened if there's a genetic predisposition to identify individuals who would have autoantibodies. And these people eventually should be excluded from donating convalescent plasma for ongoing clinical trials. One of the other conclusions from the study was that in these patients, early treatment with type 1 interference is unlikely to be beneficial because they have autoantibodies which will block um, the type 1 interferon that's being administered in the hopes of being beneficial. Here's a figure that was published by Dr. Knight's group in Science Translational Medicine, where they looked at a specific type of antibodies against phospholipid proteins. They measured eight different types of antiphospholipid antibodies in the serum of patients that were hospitalized with COVID-19 and found that at least one of the antibodies were present in more than half of the patients. These antibodies were then tested for function and uh, renal function and uh, neutrophil activation. And there's thought that these antibodies might play a pathogenic role in severe COVID infections. This is another study that's been submitted for publication or peer review. Here they looked at different kinds of antibodies. They used a uh, discovery method known as rapid extracellular antigen profiling to do a high throughput screen of a number of antibodies. So they screened against autoantibodies against cy soluble cytokines such as interferons. They looked at a number of cell surface markers on different subsets of cells, including NK cells, B cells, T cells, platelets, etc. They looked at chemokines, monocytes, lymphocytes, different factors, coagulation factors. And the findings were in people who had very severe infections, there was a significant increase in the number of autoantibodies directed against a wide variety of uh, targets, including both soluble and cell surface targets. This uh, frequency was much higher in severe patients, uh, slightly lower in moderate and asymptomatic patients. However, the researchers didn't find that a specific COVID autoantibody could be used to distinguish severely ill patients. Here's a figure from another manuscript that's been submitted for publication. In this manuscript, they looked at non-critically uh, ill critically ill and people who died from COVID infection and looked for antibodies against this molecule known as anexin A2. Anexin A2 is a critical and protective protein that's expressed in the lung and it's important for the stabilization and repair and maintaining the integrity of the vasculature in the lung. So the thinking really is if you have higher antibodies to anexin A2, so perhaps uh, it can predict mortality among hospitalized patients. But again, just to reiterate the point, this has not been peer reviewed as yet. So just to sum up, a number of studies that have either been already published or have been submitted for publication have shown that there are elevated levels of antibodies against self antigens and these antigens can either be soluble or they are targeted on specific tissues in the lung or the heart, etc. So what does this mean for us trying to understand severe COVID? It's not known why some people develop these antibodies, but it's likely to be a combination of genetics and environment. If people are already predisposed to developing these kinds of autoantibodies, uh, then there might be a way to screen people who might be more susceptible to developing severe symptoms of disease. Autoantibodies might result in targeted longer term damage compared to cytokines that were initially thought to be predominantly the reason why some people develop severe disease. On the flip side, or, the, or a good side, autoantibodies are a potential therapeutic target in severe COVID infection. 
as an example, antiphospholipid syndrome patients uh, are often treated with heparin or corticosteroids. So perhaps one needs to consider uh, these kinds of uh, treatments for COVID patients. Uh, in the study done by Dr. Casanova et al., you wouldn't want to give them type 1 interferons as a form of therapy because if they already have antibodies, they would be blocking uh, the type 1 interferon. Instead, perhaps one thing to consider would be to give interferon beta. So there's a long way to go to try to understand why people uh, with uh, develop severe order antibodies and are they uh, responsible for the severe long-term side effects seen during COVID infections. But I'm hopeful that this avenue of research will receive a lot more attention and people will identify common and novel targets that are um, of autoantibodies. Thanks again for your attention. This is Anija Matthew.